doing this. And let me tell you, I have a few uh, testimonies I just wanted to read this morning of people that are set free and have freedom because of people serving. Children's, VIP, um, hospitality, our worship team that, that's uh, still up here right now. Thursday night, they're up here, what, till 1230? Um, and then they got here, at, uh, I look at my watch, uh, it's 630 and they're rolling in this morning. I said, what are you guys doing? We just wanted to make sure it was ready. Wow, isn't that awesome? Oh, I just, that just floors me. It just makes me excited. Here's a, here's a te testimony of some people's freedom, okay? I uh, spent 10 years of my life away from church for many reasons. Finally found a home here. Uh, it's everything my family needs. Seeking answers for life, you'll find them here. God's presence is here every single service. Someone found the Lord and found church and found uh, people that you need people, because the Bible says it's not good that you be alone, after 10 years. Isn't that awesome? Because somebody was back there. Because somebody came in early. Somebody was cleaning on Saturday. Here's another one. I never felt a connection with the Bible and seen, been able to see Jesus the way I did yesterday. Nothing short of amazing. Wow. How could they see Jesus? Because they weren't having to watch their child. Huh? How could they see Jesus? Because of the people, the gifts that are using their gifts. Maybe you have a gift. Maybe it needs to be put to use. So what? So people can be free. Here, check this one out. My family will never be the same since coming to be on church. My teens are on the right track. Exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. I struggled and feared for them. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Isn't that awesome? Come on. Here, uh, for, you know, we have on Wednesday night, we have people serving on Wednesday night, both watching kids here and, you know, over in the youth building. I mean, people giving up, their, not just their Wednesday night, but all the stuff that goes into making that happen. Here's one. Maybe this one would make, get a shout out. I gave my life to Jesus today. Huh? Come on. I mean, this is what's happening because people are serving. This is what's happening. Here's one. I'm um, I just want to tell all my friends I'm loving my life. Thank you for giving me a second chance. I will praise God every second day of my life. You know what they found? They found a second chance when they came here. Huh? Isn't that awesome? Here's another one. I experienced the love and presence of Jesus today when I thought nothing mattered anymore. Come on. I'm let, I, I want to let you know, oh, excuse me, let me say it does matter. Let me, isn't that awesome when they thought it wasn't, nothing mattered anymore? Who cares? Nobody really cares. It doesn't matter. I don't matter. No, they experienced the love of God and they experienced the, the, this. Jesus says, I matter. Come on now. Yeah? How about this one? This is our kids. I caught my little girl uh, talking in her bed. She was saying, in the name of Jesus, go. I walk by faith, not by sight. How about this? Putting it into the kids. Training these children up, huh? Oh, that gets me excited. So let's make them hear us. We love you. Thank you for serving. All of you that are on the B team, thank you. And if you're not, it's not too late. Get started, center. Go get started and be a part of what God is doing here. I'm telling you what. He wants to use you. He set you in this place for such a time as this. And I, I'm telling you, there are gifts in you. And, and you will only be satisfied when you're using those gifts to serve others. Amen? So before we go any further, I just want to take a minute and, and just pray over the service, over what we're going to um, be, be, be talking about this morning. We're going to be talking on communication um, because family matters. Because family matters. Father, we love you so much. And we just honor you this morning by saying you have our heart. Lord, have your way in us. What has been in us, the way that we, uh, our, our ways, we just lay them on the altar and we say, have your way. Do any changing in our hearts. Do any change in our beliefs that we need to have today. We receive your correction. We say that we need your grace to not only be a hearer, but Father, to be a doer. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, you know, we're talking about um, family matters. Um, we've already talked about a message called It's Not Too Late. Um, then we talked about <clears throat> uh, resting, you know, the Sabbath. Last week we talked about honor. This week we're talking about um, communication. The next week we're talking about conflict. And the next week we're talking about sex. Um, and, and so if you're 12 or older, you can be in here. If you're not, I'd ask that you wouldn't be in here. Okay. Um, on that last on the last message, but you know, there's a lot of really good 
um, there's a lot of good informa information. You know, we talked last week about honor and how honor uh, prioritizes, and we talked about how to prioritize and how honor praises and and how honor protects and how honor pursues and all this stuff. You know, and, and we talked about it's not too late. We talked about all these things how you can how you see God work in your life, and and if you just start doing this and this, and and even today we're going to talk about communication. We're, I'm going to talk uh, uh, four things that I I believe need to be uh, as we're as I'm begin to talk this. Morning. I want you to pass out those notes that I, I have, but um, we're going to be talking about, I'm going to share four things that I believe need to be in our communication a whole lot more, but then I'm going to talk about uh, not just what I say, but like Gary Smalley, um, uh, all kinds of leaders on communication, uh, doctors on communication, talk about how there's four ki kinds of communication and how these four kinds of communication, typically uh, over 50% of relationships don't move past number two. But where real relationships happen, you need to get all the way down to the, the all four. They need to be a part of your life. And so we're going to talk about this, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some how-tos, some steps, some things that need to be part of your life. But let me tell you, as great as steps are, as great as um, maybe a system could be, or a one, two, three, you know, this is how you lose weight or whatever. If you don't include the Lord in these steps, you're going to fail. Even if you carry out the steps. Because it says that the Lord, Psalms 127.1 says, It is the Lord that builds the house. Except the Lord builds the house, a man does what? Labors in vain. And this is really what we're talking about. We're talking about family matters. We're talking about marriage matters. Except the Lord build a house. Except the Lord builds a house, the builders labor in vain. Except the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. We, we can stand watch, we can look out, we can make sure we're doing these things. But except the Lord be in, except you invite him in to all of your life. You know I, I, what I love, I, I think we need to do, we need to invite him into all of our life this morning. You know, even those closets. You know what I'm saying? Because you know what? He didn't mess you up with what you gave him so far, did he? So why not give him all of it? No telling what he could do. Amen? So let's uh, jump off here. We're going to talk about uh, communication. Here, this is what communication is. Because this is, I would say, this would be the number two thing you need in your marriage. Communication. The first thing you need is honor. Above all else, because if you don't honor somebody, you never communicate with them anyway. The first thing you really need in your marriage is you need honor. And we talked about this last week, that honor does what? It, it, it prioritizes, it, it praises, it protects, and it pursues. Those things should, you should be going on in your marriage on a regular basis. You know, we gave notes, we gave challenges, we put them out there, put them in your car, put them at home so you can be reminded of things, okay? of these things, but that, that's number one. But number two is communication. Let me tell you what communication is. Um, if you have your notes already, I, I wrote it on there. Communication is simply an exchange. An exchange. But here's the deal. If, if, if you say something and there's no response, if you initiate something and there's no response, that's not communication. How many uh, ladies have ever said, honey, uh, we need to leave here at five? And you see like that response like, yep, uh-huh. There, there really wasn't any, there were, communication did not really happen there. She said something, but he didn't catch it, did he? No. How many times does that happen? And things are frustrated. We're frustrated when we think we communicated. But if there's really no response, again, a communication is an exchange. If I hand you, a, 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 maybe let's say I have an egg and I, I hand it to you. If you are not taking it, it's just going to hit the floor, Right? But I gave you the egg. Yeah, no, you gave the floor the egg. You just let it fall. And so communication is so huge. It's, it's one of the things that will uh, really uh, allow frustration uh, in, a li in your life or uh, eliminate frustration in your life. Let me just talk about some of the things that I think, um, the four things I think need to be more a part of our communication. This is just something that I wanted to throw in here before we get to what the doctors say about what communication is. And then we look at what the, uh, the Lord says about our communication. So we see what doctors say, but we see how to fix those problems, all right? And again, we're looking at uh, 1 Corinthians 1. It talks about how, where is the, where are the, put it up there. This is our, our foundational scripture. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligent of, intelligence of the intelligent, I will frustrate Where's the wise person? Where's the teacher of the law? Where's the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish 
the wisdom of this world. Verse 25 tells us, it says, For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. And so we said that, how do we, how, what do we need to do right now to, to see um, you know, uh, things made right in our marriage, things made right in our family. You know what we need to do? We need to do what Jeremiah 6.16 says. and says, stand at the crossroads and look and, and ask for the ancient paths. Ask for God's way and you'll find rest for your souls. That's what it says. So that's what we're doing this morning. So number one, the things that I thought, if I could just encourage you this morning, uh, four things that I would say, let's make part of our communication again. Okay, let's, let's bring them back. And I would say love. Love needs to be a part of our communication more, more. You know, when we communicate, we need to talk to, not just communicate facts. Um, what time are you going to be home, honey? What time is this? What's for dinner? Hey, look at the weather. Did you have any homework? You have any homework? Did you get in trouble at school today? Were you good? Did you get, did you, get you know, how many of you know? Facts are, are just, we communicate facts all the time. It's all about facts. And when you're going to be home, how that is, that is this. It's questions. It's not statements of our love for one another. You know, see, the thing about Jesus, the reason we, uh, that we are even remotely uh, attracted to the Lord is because you know what he communicates every time he speaks? Love. John 3.16, I think it's probably the most famous scripture uh, for, of all time. For God so loved the world that he, what? he gave. Man, God loves you. The fact that he said, I, I love you. And you know, here's the thing. When, to communicate love, let me tell you this. It's going to cost you something. To communicate your love for somebody, if we could uh, put this back in our, co in our communication, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you to look at them more than you're looking to yourself. Oh, yep, it's not going to just be in passing. It's going to cost you something. You're going to have to lay down your life to communicate your love. Us guys, we have to think about why we love somebody. We've got to think about how to say what we're thinking. Because you think it, but you don't say it. It takes some time. It takes you laying down your life and saying, you know what, I honor you and I see you that not only do I honor you, but I need you. Would you turn to your wife or your significant other and tell them that you need them? You need to tell your mom, your dad, somebody that you need them. Well, I don't need anybody but God. Really? And that's how some of us really think. Oh, I don't need anybody but God. No, God says you need another. It's not good that you're alone. He said you have to have. And we need to communicate our love for one another. And stop just sticking to the facts, all right? The second thing that I wrote down that I think we could communicate a whole lot more or we could be, we could be doing and bring into our, our communication is eye contact. Eye contact. Man, look into your wife's eyes again. Look into your children's eyes and see who they are. You know, this, this right here, and I wrote this down. Um, and, and the reason, uh, so many times there's conflict in marriage or there's, there's something that has happened in, in a marriage and we think time is going to heal it. Kind of like a wound on your arm. How many of you think time is just going to heal or restore even just relationships? Like at work, maybe somebody said something that really hurt. Somebody communicated and they, you know, and they cut you and, you, and they really hurt. And you think time is just going to heal that? It's, it's, you're wrong. The only thing that heals Hurt in relationships is communication. It's not time. It's not time. You start, well, if something hurt, go, go look into their eyes and start talking, exchange, communicate with them, and, and go past the, we, we, the four things of communication. Number one is cliche. How are you doing? Fine. You know, the facts, talking about the weather, and move over to, if you want to see a relationship restored, move into, man, this is how it made me feel. This is what I need. And you, you see that on, on your notes. But move past that and, and create eye contact. Because when you look at somebody, that's really when there's an exchange. You know, you saw, you saw uh, Landon up here on his iPad. And I can't tell you how perfect that picture is of us and our life. Not just me and my wife, but I'm talking about everybody here. The way that technology has infiltrated this culture in the last five years. I mean, you think about iPhone 5. I mean, that, 5S, I think they have now. Like, what, like last seven years? Is, is, we didn't even have an iPhone seven years ago? That's crazy. You're like, really? What do we do? I, I don't, we talked. We looked at each other's eyes when we talked. We didn't just text. You know, we were down in, in, in Texas, and someone said, hey, I'm this so-and-so. And we're like, you're who? And they're like, oh, we're this person. And I'm like, 
I'm sorry, I don't know you. Oh, I follow you on Instagram and Facebook. So we like know each other. <laughs> I'm sorry. At least I feel like I do, they said. And I said, I, I don't, I'm sorry, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't follow you. <laughs> That's bad. I, I just can't follow a lot of people. So don't, I'll allow people to follow, but I don't, just don't have time to follow everybody. Because, you know, you can't be everything to all people. But to your families, they need you to get your time. They need to get, the, the people that are close, the, 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 you, those are the ones that really need to get your time. Okay? So if we could encourage eye contact, you know, um, because again, time does not heal relationships. Okay? Number three, I'd say this, a pause. In our communication, if we could bring this back into our communication, a pause. This is just, these are just things that, I don't know, that what, as I was getting ready, I thought, man, this would be good to bring back, a pause. You know, James 1.19 tells us that everybody should be quick to what? Listen and slow to speak, right? And here's why I think a pause should be brought back into our communication. Because I think we communicate things many times without stopping to think about what we just said. And I'm not even talking about saying something that's wrong. I'm talking about something like this. Hey, you want to come over today? Sure! But you, because you just responded, now you obligated yourself to something because you want to keep your word and now, you didn't talk to your wife, you didn't talk to your husband, you didn't talk with your kids, and because you were so quick to respond in your communication with other people, you are now creating hardships on your family or with your spouse. Oh yeah, I said we'd go out with them. Oh, I said we'd go to this birthday party. In our communication, we need to learn to pause. You know, it's okay in this culture if you don't have it now. Everybody wants to know now. I'm planning. I need it. 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 Pause. Just pause. Just, if we could bring this back in our communication, I think you would see things go, and you wouldn't commit yourself to things that you probably aren't supposed to commit yourself to because you really are supposed to be doing something else. And if you were to stop and say, hey, what do you think about this? And you include each other in on the conversation by communicating, again, exchanging, guess what? You might say, you know what? We haven't had time together as a family lately. You know what, let's, let's enjoy this day. Let's, why don't they come over here instead of sending everybody else out? And why don't we do what, do, you, what do you think we could do? I don't know, hey boys, what would you like to do today? I don't know, what would, hey, you, what, 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 what's your idea of fun? Well, I'd like to do this. Okay, let's, again, pause. Take a second. Just because someone invites you over doesn't mean you have to respond right now. So let's bring that back into our communication. Let's bring the pause back into communication. I think the fourth thing that we need to bring into our communication is an apology. This is one of those things that sometimes it's kind of hard. But we need to bring these back into our communication with our children, with our spouse. Let's apologize for being late. Let's apologize for raising our voice. Let's apologize when you, you, maybe you, you said, hey, can you get that? And you weren't even thinking, but what you just said, all of a sudden it comes back to you as that word didn't come across quite right. Apologize. Don't just let it slide. Apologize to your kids. Yeah, but I'm the dad. No, apologize to them when you miss, miss it. When you miss it and you lose your temper, apologize. Just let's bring this back in our communication. By you saying that you're, you, you're sorry, that, that you missed it, you know what it shows? It shows that there's a relationship. Again, all relationships are built and fueled by communication. If you think it's Ephesians 4.15, it says that speaking the truth in love, we may be built up. It's the only one that's in the King James Version that I gave you. I think it's Ephesians 4.15. Four, yeah, it is. But speaking the truth in love, that we may grow up in all things into him who is the head. The only thing that allows you and I to grow is the truth. Speaking the truth in love. It's, com it's speaking. It's communicating. And let me just say this. Communication that's not truth is not effective. What you're doing, you might communicate and you might think you have a great relationship, but there's nothing solid to build on. And, and if, if your relationship has been built on lies and mistruths, because if it's just a little bit of a, a lie, let me tell you, it's all a lie. And this, the foundation is shaky. But the truth in love will allow your relationship to grow. 
You got to see. So again, I, I think apologies would be one of the greatest things we can communicate and bring back into our communication. You know, so you have that on your notes this morning. Those four things I, I thought would be great to bring back: love, eye contact, a pause, and some apologies. But you know, in studying um, uh, for this, uh, there's a book by Gary Smalley. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of people did write-ups on it, saying this is probably one of the best uh, communication books I've ever read. And all the, so many other people, doctors agree with these four things uh, that all communication kind of falls under these these four categories. It's either a cliche like, "Hey." Um, how you doing? Fine. You know, the typical thing that everybody says. Or you, it moves into the next level, which is, hey, how's the weather? You know? And so you talk about facts. Uh, you have any homework? What's for dinner? Um, hey, what time are you going to be home tonight? Hey, do you think we can tonight? I mean, these are the kind of things. Facts. Just facts. Okay? Just, and not, you know, let me just tell you. Some of you might think, oh, what are you talking about? Nate? That's just, there's no relationship going on there. By just asking if you can do something or whatever, even if you exchange uh, that night, that's not really communication. That's not, you're not growing in your relationship. And you, we, think, we think we are because we got together and everything's right. Let me tell you, everything's not right. That's a, you're still at level two, exchanging facts. Okay? The next level, and, and over 50% of uh, relationships never move past this, according to studies. Over 50% of relationships never move into the what? The, the, where you talk about your feelings, how you feel, and how, when you talk about needs. And the reason why I believe this is, that they, they never move past that, is because anytime you start talking about how you feel, you make yourself vulnerable. Think about this. The reason you won't move past the, the, just the facts, you won't just move past, hey, how you doing, just fine, is because you make yourself vulnerable and because you don't really trust them. And you know why you really don't trust them? Because you really don't know them. And you know why you really don't know them? Because you haven't really communicated with them. And so we're going to talk about this morning how to move past just exchanging facts with your children, how to move past just exchanging facts with your, your spouse. We need to be exchanging a whole lot more than just facts. What time's for dinner? I mean, I'm telling you what, when one of the greatest adjustments that I've heard people say is when the kids leave the house because they don't even know who they're living with because it's all been facts. It has nothing to do with really who they are, how they feel. It's all about when the kids' games are. It's all about we got to be here at this time. It's all about this is what's on my schedule. It's all facts. You think about that. We got to change that. We got to change that culture. Let's let's go back to the ancient ways. And here's this is really this is really interesting. And, and um, uh, uh, these are some statistics. Fewer than half of sixth graders. Fewer than half of sixth graders describe their family communication as positive. Think about this. Fewer, fewer than half of, of, of sixth graders describe their communication at home in their family as positive. Sixth grade. That they can't have a positive conversation. The communication at home, there's really no good exchange. It's all, uh, did you get in trouble today? Where's your homework? This or that. Here's a, here's a statistic. Um, an average father spends less than seven minutes a day with their child or their spouse. Interesting. Interesting fact. Only 22% of high schoolers say they have a positive relationship and communication with their parents. Positive, here's what they say. Most teens, most of these teens and these tweens, okay, early 20s, okay, report that they can't talk with their parents because, number one, there are one of three things. They won't listen, they don't understand, or they'll overreact. Just to save parents embarrassment, how many, I'm not going to ask these kids here to raise their hand, but how many of you kids, how many of you young people in here, or you would have said when you were that age, I can't talk to my parents because they're not going to understand. I started to try to talk to them, but they don't take time to listen to me. They always have something else that's more important. Or, I would love to talk to them about this thing I'm struggling with, but they're going to overreact and they're going to kick my hiney and they're going to ground me for a year and they're going to take away everything and I just need help, but I can't, the very place I really, God gave me for help, I can't go. 
because they don't understand, they're going to overreact, and they won't listen. Isn't that amazing? The overwhelming majority of te uh, tween tweens and teens is what basically it was 17 to 22. Those that are still kind of around the house and are having problems cannot talk to mom and dad. I think even within marriages, there's many things that you won't share with your spouse because number one, they won't listen, or number two, they won't understand, or number three, they'll overreact. Those things, and you'd say, that's just normal. It's not normal. It's not the way it's supposed to be. Uh, let me, this is the very last scripture that I had on there. It's uh, Proverbs 31. How do you know what Proverbs 31 talks about? Anybody help me out? Virtuous women. That's what everybody thinks it only talks about. But the first nine verses, everybody, that's what I always thought. Proverbs 31. When I, saw, when I saw this and I was looking up, I thought, oh my gosh, Proverbs 31? No way. There's other scriptures. I think there's a misprint here. I mean, I really did. So I looked here. One, uh, verses 1 through 9. There, this is right here. The words of King Lemuel. And this is the strong advice his mother gave him. There was supposed to be interaction. There always was supposed to be advice going on and interaction between young people. And here, here we know that he is a young man because here's what she says. The strong advice his mother gave him, verse 2. I'll, let's go through verse 9. Oh, son of mine, what can you be thinking of? Uh, this is just, it's really interesting. I know this is the message. Read it in a lot of different translations. But she's saying, what can you be thinking of? I wonder what's on your mind right now. Okay, child, the one that I bore, the son I dedicate to God. Don't dissipate, now she says, don't dissipate your, uh, I don't even know how to, I'm sorry, hooked on phonics, virility, virility okay, uh, on fortune hunting, okay, don't, don't go after looking for, for fortunes, don't spend your youth looking for fortune, okay, um, or hunting women, fortune, uh, hunt, don't, don't look for women, you need to look for God's one. Don't go looking for this or that. Uh, promiscuous women who shipwreck leaders. Leaders can't afford to make fools of themselves. He's saying, she's saying, hey, you shouldn't be drinking wine and, and, and swilling beer. You can't. I, I, and if you read it in the King James, you read it in most of these, it says leaders should not be partaking of wine and strong drink. I didn't say it. People ask me, is drinking okay? I don't know. It says leaders shouldn't. At least this was the, 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 the king's wife's, uh, 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 or the king's mom was telling her, or telling him that, guess what, guys? I don't think you, this shouldn't be a part. This is instruction. And it goes on to say why. It says, lest they're hung over and they don't know right from wrong. I mean, they're accountable for, for more is what she's simply saying. People are looking to them for right and wrong. And, and, and the people who depend on them may be hurt. You know? And so this is just to, to the, this, this king, to this leader. Don't, don't have that, okay? Go on. Use wine and beer only as sedatives. Okay? And, this is, and, and so she's talking to him about the things that are real. So many times we don't talk about real issues. We have this, so you're going to get on the way out. It's kind of the challenge. But there's some real uh, conversation starters for your young people. You know, like uh, when you're with your friends and, and things that are happening, drugs and alcohol, uh, sex, things like that. Great conversation starters that you can start. And here's what she's doing. She said, hey, don't be looking for those women. Don't, hey, this is what you really should be going after. Hey, when it comes to strong drink, you need to stay away from that because you're a leader and you don't want to hurt somebody else. And this and that. And then he, she says, here's really what it should be used for. The, Okay, to kill the pain of the terminally ill for those for whom life is living death. Verse, uh, and then he says, she says this, speak up for the people who have no voice. Speak up for the people that have no voice and for the rights of all the down and outers. Would you, man, look out for those people. And she's instructing him, there's an exchange going on. And the king is writing this in Proverbs. This is not his mama writing it. This is what his mama told him. So we know there was something going on there. In verse 9, it, it finishes up. I just think it's so good. Speak out for justice. Stand up for the poor and the destitute. And um, him to a good wife. Sing to your wife. So here, here are the things that, that, that there's, a, there's an interaction. And this is not the way. The, the fact that, that 
over, I think it was like 80 something percent of tweens don't ha- can't talk to their mom and dad. That's crazy because they think they're on some issues because they're going to overreact because they don't understand or they don't have time to listen. So how do we get to the place? And we see, in the, it, it, when we look back here, we see that their interaction was supposed to happen. It was created to happen. How can we get from just get it to the deeper things, the things that we're feeling, the things that we're talking about? How can we get to those things? If, if there's four levels of communication, cliche, fact, feeling, and need, how can we move past number two? That's what we're going to talk about this morning because I think that's really important to get into our marriages again. All right? Here, and this is my prayer that we would no longer, we would not just go through life um, sitting in the passenger seat, you know, with, whether it's with our spouse or with our children and allow them to go down certain roads that really just aren't beneficial. So many times we are with our, or we're with our families, we're with our kids, but we're just asleep in there, in the car. And so my prayer for this message is really that we would be awakened and we would put down the things that are distracting us and begin to engage with the people that God put in our life. All right? And so the way that we can begin to do this is we got to have to build trust. The reason, again, why we don't go, I'm trying to find my notes here, but the reason we don't go past those two things is because we really don't know how they're going to treat us. We really just don't know. If I say this, are they going to overreact? If I say this, that is, you know. So how do we build this trust? How do we build the bridge from that vulnerable place to the safe place? Okay, the first thing that we need to do is listen. If you want to build trust, if you want to move from the, just the two top two and you move into the deeper place, the deeper relationship, which the only way, uh, this is what God made relationships for. Number one, so that you could be ministered to, and number two, so you could minister. Think about that. There are things you have to have from some other person, but you're going to only get it through communication. And there are things that they got to have from you, but they're only going to get it through what? Communication. And so if we would bring this back up, ensure, if we can, how we can ensure that, that, that they're going to feel safe, they're going to, this is how, if we start to listen more. Yeah, I wrote this right here. Listen to the little ones. Listen, like think about your kids. Listen to the kids when they're little. Even when you think you have something more important you're thinking about. Let's start this when they're in, in young, I mean young, at preschool age. Listen to the little ones. Listen to what they're saying. Even if you think you have something else that's more important. Let me tell you, you don't. You don't. Three things happen when you do this. When you think you have something else more important, so you're not listening to their story of the day or whatever it may be from school or their day at work or when they come home and say, Honey, I got some really great deals at Target. Look what I got you. Whoa. And I just got all the groceries for the week. Oh, that's great, honey. That's great because you have something more important. Three things happen when you don't listen. If we would bring our listening back up, guess what would happen is we would eliminate these three things. These three things happen. Number one, you miss an opportunity to know and train. Think about your children. By not listening to what happened that day, you miss an opportunity to know who they are, know what makes them tick, know what makes them smile, but then also you miss an opportunity to train. Think about that. Just by listening, you could say, hey, yeah, that's great. And, and you could steer them. You could tell a story of how when you were a kid that happened, but then this happened. You know, you, you, you miss that opportunity. The second thing you do, um, you or your child, uh, or, or excuse me, your child or your spouse learn that you don't listen, so why talk? You know, some of, some of us are at this place right now. There's not a whole lot of talking going on. Because they don't listen anyway, so why talk? I would love to open up to, to my husband when I get home, but he doesn't listen anyway, so I'm going to talk to that, that guy that thinks I'm kind of cute anyways at, at work, and he wants to listen. He wants to listen to me. He wants more than to listen to me, which you might be thinking he just wants to listen. But he wants a whole lot more than that, but he's listening, so you just start talking. 
Let me tell you, if you're exchanging things that, with other people that you don't exchange with your husband or your wife, you're in a dangerous spot. Really dangerous. But what if we started listening? Because when you don't listen, when you say something else is more important, you tell them, don't speak because I won't listen anyway. So immediately your, your, your relationship comes to a halt. When there's no communication, there's no building of a relationship. Because why we saw it, Ephesians 4.15, speaking the truth in love, what we are built up. Okay? The third thing is this. They are told that there aren't as important as. This is a big one for children. When you're in the middle of something and they come up, press pause on, on what you're doing so you can tell them that they're more important than what you're doing. If we start listening, if we start doing this again and bring our listening back in, let me tell you, this is the first step to building the bridge from vulnerability to trust and security. Listen, number two, the second thing I think that would build this bridge, and a lot of this ties back to honor. A lot of this ties back to honor. We need to understand. Now this one, this one's huge. We need to understand more. Now it says this in, in Proverbs 8, 2, and I didn't give you this, I didn't put up the scriptures on the first one about listening. Uh, James 1, 19, so you can see it. It says, be quick to listen, slow to speak. But then the, the other one was found in Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 18, 3, or excuse me, 18, 13. I love this verse, and this was for the first one. I just want you to see it. It says, to answer before listening, that is folly and shame. So many times, even what, what he was doing here, he said, oh, that's great, honey. That's great. It's folly and shame. As a matter of fact, where it says folly and shame, really what that means is asking for quarrel. Asking for a fight. You're asking for a division. That's what that means. A fight is divisive. By answering before listening, you're asking for a fight. The second one, again, like I said, was understanding. Proverbs 18.2, it tells us this. Again, these are the ancient ways. These are not something that Nate said, oh, here's five things that could work. You just take my word for it. You know? No. Fools, it says this, that fools find no pleasure in understanding, but delight in airing their own opinions. It's foolish. You know what a fool does? A fool does not care for another person. Think about this. Foolish people drive 100 miles an hour down the road. Foolish people drive drunk. Foolish people do, why? They don't care if, if something happens. It's foolish. It's foolish to take a kid on the back of a four-wheeler and go 60 miles an hour. Because you're just simply saying, I really don't care what happens. The people that don't care find no pleasure in understanding. And you know, I wrote little things on here when, about what, what it says when you want to understand. It says, I want to be your friend. When you start to understand, you know, our children need friendship. So do our spouses. And it's to be in you. It's to be in you, uh, to understand. So here's, here's the things. Um, you know, to understand, you have to put yourself in their shoes. But I would ask you this. What size do they wear? I know that sounds funny. What size do your kids wear? You know, wh what situation are they really in? What, 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 where are they at? Why are they at where they're at? What's their personality? What makes them tick? To understand them, you need to understand who they are. Put yourself in their shoes. And, and so this is how, if you want to understand the situation, maybe you're, you, you know, something major happened, what you would classify as major happened with your, your teenager or with your spouse. And normally you would blow up and, you know, it's, it's war instantly. And so this is why no communication happens. But if we want to understand, these are some things that I wrote down, I think, that would really help us is number one, I think to understand we need to learn to breathe. I, I was thinking about what happens to me when, when, when things go on, when things go on, I, I just, you, you stop breathing. Think about these times you just stop breathing. You're just ready to respond. You're ready to start talking. You're ready to react. Just breathe. Just stop and breathe and begin and listen. Okay. And ask the question, then what? And how did that happen? And what next? So what you're trying to tell me is this? Is that what you... Listen. Ask the question. Give yourself some time to breathe. Here's what... This is really interesting. Uh, a scientific fact. 
Um, and I, I talked about this about a year ago, um, but the fact is that when, 100, when your heart re- ra- raises over 100 beats per minute, when someone communicates something to you and your heart rate raises to over 100 beats a minute, that you lose the ability to think of, to, you lose the ability to rationalize. Think about that. And I, this is something that I said last year, and I think it still sticks with me, is when you raise your voice, you lose your choice. Think about that. When, when something's going on, and you get excited, and your heartbeat starts raising, and you hear something you didn't want to hear, and, because, and you hear something that hurts you, and then now your heartbeat starts pounding a little bit, and you, don't, and you don't pause, and you decide to open your mouth. Matter of fact, King David said in Psalms 141.3, he said, Lord, put a guard over my lips. It's really interesting. But so your heartbeat starts to raise. You say things that you will wish you would have never said. Anybody ever done that when your heartbeat got up? And you thought, why did I just say that? And then you get mad at yourself for what you just said. And then you're mad that you're mad. And then you're mad you just keep going until you finally get over it. And sometimes you never get over it. And sometimes, the time, by the time you get over it, You've done forgot about why you got upset, but those words still went forth, and they're still hurt, and they're still in there. And they remember it more than you remember it, because it was just in your moment of irrationalness that you didn't even mean what you said, but guess what? They caught it, and it hurt. And it's still there. They, have, they, they haven't been able to get that arrowhead out, or that, that, that thing, that splinter out. And so, I would say, what is, the, what is the key to understanding? Proverbs 15.1 tells us this, that a soft answer, whisper, whisper. If, if your heart beats start, just whisper. So, um, is this what? Whisper. I mean, the Bible tells us this, that a soft answer turns away wrath. But if you become wrath, full of wrath, guess what you're going to do? You're going to break that bridge of for, you know, where they're so vulnerable to trust, you're going to break that bridge. When you become, ah, they're just not going to, they're going to shut down. They don't want to be a part of that. They're going to do everything they can to please you. They don't want that to happen. All right? So we got to begin to understand. And I think this, I wrote this, the last one. Remember, remember this. When you're trying to understand a situation, remember that the reason that they're talking to you is that they already know that the situation isn't quite right. Or they already know that they messed up. And so they probably have a solution already and they want it to see it repaired and fixed. Remember, when somebody's communicating something to you that might be a little bit edgy, that might be a cause a little bit of stuff, they already know that it might. And so they're putting themselves out there saying, okay. And they're just wanting you to say, okay, so how can we... What can I help you do? Maybe, maybe you know, your kid got in trouble for getting high. And they say, you know, Mom, last night I was, yeah, I mean, I just, I did. I took it, you know, I just, whatever. And you go, oh, what? You're never, nah, 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 nah. you know, that's the last time you ever hear about any of that. The last time, and it'll probably escalate because you know what? You don't care, and my friends care. You don't care. Think about that. I mean, I, seriously, really? You're never going to hear it again. So remember. The next thing is number three is this. I think if we would begin to do this, and I think this is so huge for marriages, but also for our children, we don't realize this. Um, keep confidences. Keep confidences. You know, if you would begin to treat every bit of information you receive as privileged information, this would help. I mean, I'm talking about things, maybe you have a, a son or somebody in your family that's a little bit more flatulent. No, I mean, hey, you know, they, they, they have, maybe have bowel problems or maybe they just like fruit and it just shows, right? <laughs> you know what? You don't need to talk about that to everybody. You're cutting them down. I mean, I'll tell you a story about me. You think it's kind of funny. Um, we were going on vacation and... Uh, we, I don't know, I was just not feeling well and we're like leaving on vacation and I jump in the vehicle and we're heading out late at night and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, Evan, I think I just messed myself. <laughs> and we're on the way. I appreciate that new gas station, Hilltop. Um, 
on Ozark. We're heading down I-40. I was so thankful it was brand new um, because I had to make a change. No, that's it. You know, and, and that was embarrassing, really, you know, because I, I mean, I was just not feeling good. I did, boom, it's like, whoa, hey, hey, you know, ah! and you just have that 30 mile drive and we had just gotten the Alma exit. And uh, none of you have, I'm surely none of you have ever done something like that. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, and, uh, and so I had, you know, she got like thankful that I had clothes with me and all that. And so change was like, oh my goodness. And that was kind of like, yeah, you know, you're kind of embarrassed that that happened, right? And, but you know what's more embarrassing? When you haven't, when nobody asked you. So number one, know that when you get information and, and you learn, you need to start keeping confidences. If we'd start to keep confidences again. And before you share anything that you would ask, is that okay to share that? But instead somebody is talking with their friends and they just want to laugh. You know, a laugh with another is not worth dab damaging your significant other think about that but they just thought it'd be funny to oh yeah and they're already laughing and then one time my dad or one time yeah Nate was in the car and then this was what happened and you're like oh thanks thanks honey telling all my friends thanks buddy or saying hey and he pooped his pants and then he did it one time when he was laying in bed and then and you just hear, hear all the things that have happened in your life you do a salt water treatment all right You know what though it's a joke but seriously what are you talking about about your wife to your friends at work what are you talking about about your husband to your girlfriends you know what you're doing you're cutting the bridge you're staying at two you're never gonna get to the thing that God brought you together to, to have because you don't know how to keep confidences you got to learn to keep confidences you know when something's confidential and somebody comes by, you know what you do? Hey, how are you? You cover. Confidence covers. When you know, when, when your children know that you cover them, and you don't show everybody their faults, you don't talk to your mom, you don't talk to their aunt, you don't talk to their uncle, you don't talk to their friend's mom. Yeah, well, my boy, he's this and this and this. Maybe he struggles with maybe being a little hy more hyperactive than everybody else. Yeah, well, he's got the. You know what you're doing? You're eliminating just by doing that. You're cutting the bridge. You're cutting the bridge. You will not hear about his mistakes or his failures. You will not hear about her mistakes or her failures as long as you don't cover, as long as you don't know how to keep confidences. You won't hear about it. One thing I value more than anything in people is when I meet somebody that knows how to keep confidences and when you say, share something, they know without you even saying something to them, hey, you know, that's privileged information. Don't say that to, you know, yeah, man, I, you, you didn't have to say that, but I, we're on the same page. I value that. I value that because you know what that is? That's moving from this place of vulnerability to a place of security. Where, where there can be an exchange. You know, the bridge is going, you know, there's back and forth going on. The fourth thing I put on there is this, and I, 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 guess, I guess I just see this in the Word when it talks about communication. I, these are all scriptures on communication, and I'm try, just trying to break it down to what the Lord was saying to me as I was getting ready for this, and that is tell the truth. Tell the truth. Ephesians, in, in Ephesians 6, 14, I think this is a significant scripture. Um, it says, standing firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place. And you're saying, how is that significant in communication? It's the one thing that holds it all together. When you know someone is truthful with you, even when it's a little bit hurt, because they know this, that you're going to understand, because they under you understand, you can be truthful. See how they just build? You listen. You understand. You keep confidences. I can tell you the truth. Honey, I'm struggling with this. Hey, honey, I'm uh, this. They can tell you, the, hey, daddy, this. Hey, daddy, I, I'm really, I'm having feelings for this. They can tell you the truth. 
I can tell you the truth, and, and we already had read this, but Ephesians 4.15 tells us that building, speaking the truth in love, building one another up, it's the only thing that allows your marriage, allows your relationship between your child. Many of us have um, been talking to our children full of lies. No, the shot's not going to hurt. Let me tell you, if the shot's going to hurt when they get a shot, tell them the truth. Speak it in love. Buddy, it's going gonna, it's gonna to sting. It's going to sting a little bit. But guess what? I'll be right here. I'll be by your side. And afterwards, we can get ice cream or, or maybe you're going to get a sticker and a really cool camouflage band-aid. Okay. But tell the truth. Tell the truth. If you don't tell the truth, there's not a foundation to build on. Tell the truth. Tell the truth about the things that have been bothering you with your spouse. Yeah, but I don't know. No. We're working on this right here. We're working on understanding. We're going to take these things home and we're going to say, you know what, I do need to understand. I do need to stop. I need to have that soft answer. I need to, I need to remember that they already know what, what's going on. They probably already have a solution for it. They're just trying to let you know so that they don't have to keep secrets so they can come back with you. Because you know what secrets really do? When you got a secret, it makes you go like this. It causes separation. Think about when you start keeping secrets or if you want to keep something secret. Maybe when you were younger, you had a spot in your room that you hid something. And if somebody goes over there, maybe to tuck in the sheets or something like that, when they get close to that area, hey, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, whoa, look it over here. When they get close to that secret spot, when they get close to that vulnerable place in a conversation, you try to change the subject. What it does, really, it draws you apart. It draws you apart. The last thing that I think we really could, if we would bring this back into um, building the bridge, and that's encouraging dreams. Encouraging. You know, Ephesians 4.29 tells us that... <clears throat> um, to build one another up. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Think about that. Only those kind of words that we would encourage one another. And I, I put on there, you know, on the last one, encourage their dreams. Because I think this is really important. You know, to encourage somebody's dreams, you got to know their dreams. I, I heard this said and I thought it was so right on that God does not speak in anything but dreams and not just that you have dreams but I thought this I thought it was right on he speaks in the things that are not just possible he speaks in the form of, of dreams he speaks in the things that in your own strength are not possible think about that God is speaking to you and me about the things that we would like to be or that he would like to be in our life and they can be. And the reason he told us these things is because he's saying, would you take it? Would you receive it? He speaks in dreams. That's how he speaks to us. That's how we're to speak to our kids. That's how we're to speak to our wife. You can be anything you want to be. Speak to their dreams. Why do they have those dreams? You enable the call and the plan of God upon your family's life. Communicate with them. Encourage one another. Building them up. That it may produce grace to the hearer. You know what grace there is translated? It's power and ability. Your words, our communication has that kind of power. To keep someone from what God has called them to be. Maybe a faithful husband that provides well and loves their family and trains up young men and women to chase the Lord with all their heart and reach people only they can. But because what's communicated or not communicated, not been praised, not, you kept them out. You keep them out. Because you don't communicate with your child, you keep them out. I know it's just a little bit we're wrapping it up right here. But I, let me just tell you, sometimes, sometimes we have to hear things that will help. And it's more important than something after.